Welcome to another edition of Mac Break Studio. I'm actually in a physical location with my buddy Mark Spencer here in Cupertino, home of Apple, for the Final Cut Pro 10 Summit. Oh my gosh, it's so muddy. muddy. It's muddy. so muddy. <laughs> uh. Anyway, so we're releasing a new plugin. We are. Uh, today, or this week anyway, Ripple Whips version 3.0. So, so Ripple has been out for a while and we've updated a few times, but this is a really big update because it's got twice the number of transitions in there, mm -hmm. a lot of exciting new transitions, very fast ones, glitchy ones, a lot of stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about five tips for getting the most out of Ripple Whips, which is on sale this week, so check it out. Okay, first things first. Ripple Whips is distributed through the FX Factory application. Think of it as like an app store for plugins for Final Cut Pro. So you go to fxfactory.com, click on download, and download the most recent version. Once you've launched it, go to the catalog tab and scroll down until you see the Ripple training section and locate Ripple Whips. Mine says purchased, yours will say download trial, unless you've already bought it. If you already own a prior version of Whips, this is a free upgrade for you. Click that to download a fully functional watermarked trial. Once you've done so, in Final Cut Pro, go to the Transitions browser, click on the Ripple Whips category, and there you'll see the 36 templates that make up Ripple Whips 3.0. Tip number one, use camera movement. Ripple Whips are organized by movement direction, up, down, left, right, diagonal, in, out, rotate, and then a couple of glitch options. They're organized that way because I usually I find it's the best way to choose the right one to use. For example, if we go to this first clip, we've got a camera movement that goes left to right, followed by another clip that also goes left to right. So I'll select the edit point, go down to my right category, and for instance, add short whip right. and we have a nice transition that moves in the same movement as the camera does from one shot to the next. Here's another example where we have a starting shot where there's a pan to the right, and the next shot kind of moves forward and up. So you've got a couple choices here. For instance, we could use right again, maybe long whip right, or let's choose whip right and flip. If this is selected, it will automatically be replaced with the same duration. But you can easily adjust the duration of any of these. And here's an example where the camera is moving up and then it's sideways in the next shot. So I'll click this edge, go to my up category, and try whip up and flip. Each of these transitions have a few parameters you can adjust. For example, with this short whip right, you can adjust the color that appears during the transition. For this whip right and flip, you can adjust the prism amount and the blur amount that happens during the transition. And for this whip up and flip, we can choose how far it pushes in, how much it shifts in direction, how much it rotates, let's rotate it some more, and then adjust the acceleration. So check out your camera movement and start with a whip that matches that camera movement. Tip number two, use on stills with Ken Burns. Ripple whips also work great on stills. So here I have two stills and notice neither of them fit this aspect ratio correctly, but that doesn't matter. What we're gonna do with each of these is select the crop tool, and then select Ken Burns and create a little move on them. In fact, I've already set this one up with starting kind of at their feet and ending up towards the top so we see their faces. So if I apply that, we have this nice movement right here. Also with this clip, I'll turn on Ken Burns as well. And you can see I've set up a little move. I'll click done. And we can see we're backing out for her. So with these nice moves on these two clips, they both fill the frame. And now I'll add a whip, for instance, short whip up between them.
And it's very easy to adjust the timing. If I want that move to happen faster before and after the transition, I'll just shorten these stills. And I'll try another whip like up to the right. And maybe I'll shorten that a little bit. So combining ripple rips with Ken Burns is a great way to create dynamic movement on stills that continues through the transition. Tip number three, use on titles and logos. Ripple whips also work great on titles, logos, basically anything with transparency. So I have a couple examples here. I'm using ripple titlemations, but any animated titles will work. So the thing I would recommend though is, for instance, this first title animates on but I've turned off the outgoing animation. So in the title inspector, we have animate on and animate off parameters and I've unchecked animate off because the transition really takes care of the animation. So if I play through this here, there's that sharp whip right transition that I've applied from ripple whips. And we get a nice quick kind of colorful animation. Here's another title that again, here I've turned off both the animate on and animate off parameters and I've added the warp and whip left. And here's another one where I've used the whip left and bounce and I've adjusted the timing a little bit. And again, I've turned off the animation for this. And then I have a glitch here going into the logo. So just a great way to spice up transitions of titles and graphics. Since they're on transparency, these titles can be over background. So I'll enable these backgrounds here. I've put some pictures underneath them and I've added their own transitions to them. So you can do something like this, or you have a separate transition for the title and for the video or the still underneath. So don't forget that you can use whips on titles and logos and they look great. Tip number four, create custom framing. The custom templates in Ripple Whips give you a lot of control. So in each theme, for instance, here's the up theme, we've got a custom option with these two little framing icons. Same in down, push down custom. Left has a custom one, right has a custom one. And then we have two custom ones in rotate, sky flip and ground flip. I think sky flip can be the most useful. So for example, I have two clips here that have a similar sky in the background, although the content is completely different. Uh, one's, I don't know where this shot is, but this shot is here is in Belize. And rather than a straight cut that looks like this, we can do something much more dramatic by taking advantage of the fact that the skies look similar. And if your skies do not look similar, sometimes you can color correct them to get them look clo looking closer. So I'm gonna select this edit point and I'm gonna double click the sky flip custom transition. And if I play across that now, we get a push in and a flip and the sky looks pretty darn seamless, especially if we speed things up a little bit by just shortening that, we get a really nice transition. Now, the cool thing about this is you can modify it. If you move the playhead in the middle of it and select that transition up in the transition inspector, we can change this pop-up menu here to adjust framing and we can see the framing for the move. So it's first gonna push into this clip, but maybe we wanna push in a little closer to that horse and buggy down there. And then when it moves to this next clip, we can have it frame maybe a little bit higher right about there. So you can adjust the position of these moves as well as the scaling of them. So over here, you can adjust how tight it pushes in. And let's do that also for the first move and have push it in a little bit tighter and move it over there. In addition, you can adjust this blend between the two. So there's this mask feather amount that you can crank up or down, to try to blend those two together more. And you can adjust the mask position as well. Pretty good where it is. You can also change this pop-up menu to move clip and mask. And then you can move each of these clips. If for example, the action you have is way off in a corner, you could shift them off something like that. I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. Here it works pretty well as is. I'll go back to action. And now if we play that through, we move in on their horse and buggy and pull out uh, on the girls. So very, very flexible. Let's look at this next cut. We have the girls jumping in the water and then we cut to this uh, guy kiteboarding. And here, because the water at the top of this 
kind of is similar to the water down here. Maybe we move up instead of flipping. So I'll select that edit point. I'll go up to our up category and double click the push up custom. And if we play through that, we immediately get something that looks quite good. I'll also shorten the duration of that. And once again here, if I select this, we can go to the adjust framing and maybe push in more right on where they dived in the water and focus a little bit more on him. And we could also say move clip and mask and just, you know, maybe as it comes up, it moves over to the left a little bit to reveal him. Let's try about there and see how that works. Go back to action and play that through. And in that case, I moved it a little too far over to the left. You can see that. So I want to go back to my move clip and mask and not move it up for quite so far. I'd have to be zoomed in more if that were to work to move over there. But the point is, depending on your content, you've got a lot of control over manipulating how the camera moves from one shot to the next. Here's another one here where we move to the left to go from this guy to the surfer just by sliding right to the left. So that's using the left custom. So anything that says custom in here that has these little black outlines include these additional controls that let you adjust exactly how the camera moves from one clip to the next. Tip number five, add sound effects. Finally, these whips can be accented with some sound effects and they're built right into Final Cut. So let's go over here to the photos and audio sidebar and I'll select sound effects. And specifically for most whips, if you type whoosh in here, we have a variety of different kind of whoosh sounds that can work well with these. I like to organize them by time. So the shortest ones appear at the top. And of course it depends on your content, but down here I have a clip on vacation basically switching to back at home in traffic. So that's a pretty dramatic change. So by adding in the sound effect, it kind of accents that change in location. On the other hand, for glitches, where you're using one of the glitch transitions like this, I find these synth effects work pretty well. So once again in here, I'll click and I'll type stinger. And there's a variety of different short stingers in here. Little cartoon sounds, little accents. And I kind of like that one, this synth zinger. And in fact, here I've used this synth zap accent. So if I type in zap, there's a couple different zaps that work well that you can use. So find the one that you like and just connect it underneath the transition. So as you can see, there's such awesomeness in Ripple Whips 3.0. Check it out, click the link below, and uh, you can get it on sale right now for one week only.